today we will be finishing up our unit on rational uh, functions and equations. We're going to be solving rational equations today and the method we're going to talk about today is probably one you are familiar with from your earlier algebra one days or maybe middle school days we are where we are going to cross multiply. The other day we solved rational equations by finding common denominators and multiplying both sides by uh, those common denominators. Today we're going to talk about ways you can tell when you could do cross multiply instead, and you will probably find this much easier. So we can use cross multiplication only when you have a fraction, a single fraction equal another single fraction. You know, up here in these problems, we have this minus five right here. So we don't have one single fraction equals another single fraction. If this minus five wasn't there, then you could cross multiply these. So that's why yesterday or the other day we did this common denominator stuff. But when you just have a fraction equal another fraction, you can cross multiply. So we're gonna multiply these two and these two. And you need to remember to multiply everything. So this is going to be 7 times 2x minus 10 equals 11 times x minus 2. That's the biggest mistake you will make when doing this. So then we distribute and we get 14x minus 70 equals 11x minus 22. And this is a nice linear equation that we all know how to solve. So we'll, sub we'll add 70 to both sides. And we'll also subtract 11x from both sides. Because I always like to subtract the smallest x's or move the smaller amount of x's. That way my the number of x's I have will be positive. 14 minus 11 is 3x. And negative 22 plus 70 is 48. And then we can divide both sides by 3. And x is going to equal 16. Now with rational equations, you know, we talked about that you have to check your solutions. You know, find any extraneous solutions. So we're going to double check. And as I said before, almost 100% of the time, the only answers that won't work are ones that will give you zero in the denominator. But let's just make it a habit of always checking. And again, we plug it into the original equation. So 7 over 16 minus 2 equals 11 over 2 times 16 minus 10. So if you uh, simplify the left side, you get 7 over 14 equals, and when you simplify the right side, you get 11 over 2 times 16 is 32, minus 10 is 22, and then we reduce both fractions. 1 half equals 1 half. So x equals 16 is a solution. So I'm going to go and do it example 2, and then I want you to go back and try these two solo problems after we do example number two. So we'll start off with our cross multiplication. So it's going to be x times 2x minus 5 equals x minus 2 times 3x minus 6. And now notice I wrote the right side in parentheses because we have to FOIL that. The left side is going to be 2x squared minus 5x equals, when I FOIL this side, is going to be 3x squared minus 6x minus 6x again, and then plus 12. So I'm going to combine the right side first. 2x squared minus 5x equals 3x squared minus 12x plus 12. Now I'm going to subtract 2x squared from both sides. I'm also going to add 5x. 
So it's going to be 0 equals x squared minus 7x plus 12. Now that this quadratic equals 0, we can factor this. Two numbers that multiply to 12 but add up to negative 7, that's going to be x minus 3 and x minus 4. So my solutions are x equals positive 3 and x equals positive 4. And then we can check these. And I'm going to write, write them out. And x equals 4. And then we're going to use the calculator. So 4 over 4 minus 2. Does that equal 3 times 4 minus 6 over 2 times 4 minus 5? So in our calculator, we're going to create those fractions. Alpha y equals 4 over 4 minus 2. You may not, need, may not have needed a calculator for that, but if we have it, why not? We hope to get 2 on the other side. 3 times 4 minus 6 over 2 times 4 minus 5. And we get 2 as well. So that works out. So x equals 4 is a solution. Now we're going to try x equals 3. So 3 over 3 minus 2 equals 3 times 3 minus 6 over 2 times 3 minus 5. Well, the left side, that's pretty easy. 3 over 3 minus 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. 3 over 1 is 3. The right side, I could probably work my way through that, but it's very easy to make mistakes. But we hope we get 3, and we do get 3. So that works. So x equals 3 is our solution as well. So we have two of them there. So like I said, I want you to pause the video, try these two solo problems. Once you are done, unpause it to check your answers and look at the work. So on the next page here, before I cross multiply, I want to factor this. And you can still cross multiply this. Um, it just will take a little bit longer. If we factor out a 3 from the top, though, we get x plus 2. And then if we factor out the denominator, we get x minus 2 times x plus 2 because it's the difference of squares. It was x plus 1 over x minus 2. And the reason why I decided to factor this first is because you know, I recognize that this is a difference of squares. And I also recognize that both of these numbers can be divisible by 3. And when I do that, I have in x plus 2 on top and bottom that cancel. So what we're left with is 3 over x minus 2 equals x plus 1 over x minus 2. This leads me to another kind of shortcut that I want to talk about, where since the denominators are both the same, we can ignore them. We don't have to cross multiply. It'd be like the same thing as multiplying x minus 2 on both sides. Right? If we multiply both sides by x minus 2 from the previous lessons, we know that these two would cancel and these two would cancel. And then we are left with 3 equals x plus 1. All right? Then we would subtract 1 from both sides and we get 2 is equal to x. You could, instead, back here in blue, you could have cross-multiplied. But as you can see, when you cross-multiplied, you would have had to done x minus 2 times x plus 1, foil that out. That would give you a quadratic, and then you would have to factor that quadratic, get your two solutions, and test both of them. Doing it this way, though, got us to our answer a little bit quicker. So then we got to plug in 2 and see if it works. 
Now, some of you might have already seen that this is not going to work because we're going to get zero in one, or actually both denominators, but if you get zero in just one of them, then the solution does not work. You know, two squared is four. So it doesn't matter what we get on top. It doesn't matter that we get 12 over zero and three over zero because we have zeros in the denominator. This does not work. So there are no solutions. So example number three here is a word problem. From 1995 through 2003, the annual sales S in billions of dollars of entertainment software can be modeled by the following equation, where T is the number of years since 1995. For which year were the total sales of entertainment software about 5.3 billion? So what this means is that my S is 5.3. Because sales is in billions of dollars, it says software $5.3 billion. So 5.3 equals 848T squared plus 3,220 over 115t squared plus 1,000. Now, we're going to solve this equation. You say, well, what do we do? If we write 5.3 as 5.3 over 1, now suddenly we can cross multiply. And this is going to give us 5.3 times 115t squared plus 1,000 equals 1 times 848t squared. Well, if we're multiplying anything by 1, it just stays the same. Okay, that we can distribute. And if we type that uh, into the calculator, we're going to get 609.5t squared plus... 5,300. And then we have 848t squared equals 3,220. All right, then we need to get t by itself. So let's uh, subtract 609.5t squared from both sides. Whoops, this should not be an equals. I'm sorry, this should be a plus. And then we're also going to subtract 3,220 3, from both sides. All right. And in doing this, we get 2,080 equals 238.5 T squared. So then we divide both sides. Right, two two thirty eight point five, and that's going to give us a decimal, and that's okay. That gives us eight point seven. Oops. And then we square root both sides. Uh, the square root of 8.7 is a, is really close to 3. So we're going to just round that. We get, when we do this, we get 8, 2.95 is equal to T. So about 3 years. Now the problem says in what year will it happen? Not how long will it take for which year. So we know that it is going to take about three years, but since we started in 1995, we need to add three to that. So the actual year is going to be 1998. So that's why it's important to make sure you read the problem and answer the question that it is asking. So I hope that this was um, a, a good video for you to to watch and to understand another way to solve these rational equations. I think that this way is probably easier than the other ones. You know, we, we've been doing cross multiplication for a while now, 
and now we just kind of kicked it up a notch. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe.